Lord rain. 
receiving the favor of the Lord on their life in this place. Come on, let's praise Him. Like we're going to see a mighty move of God. Like we're believing for a revival. Like the Holy Spirit is going to pour out in this place. Your spirit pouring out on us, so oh God, we need revival, stirring up, oh God, we just want you. We just want you. 
presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Many of us in this place and many watching online have a need, need a desperate miracle. Maybe we're carrying loss or carrying a burden that's too heavy for us to carry. But the Holy Spirit is here tonight. And he wants you to know that He sees you, He hears you, and He cares for you. And the Bible says, come to me, all you who are weak and weary, and I will give you rest.
our hands and sing it tonight. healing. When you're in the presence of God, God begins to move in your life. I don't know about you, but I can sense the presence of God here tonight. How many can sense that? Amen. So tonight you may come in a little bit weary. Some come in maybe a little bit hurt, hurting, broken. Or maybe tonight you just need to be refreshed and encouraged tonight. Well, I got great news for you. You're in the presence of God. And you're able to receive exactly what you need tonight. So I want you to lift up your hands and we're going to pray from all over this place. Come on, lift up your hands and we're going to pray tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come before you. And God, we thank you that your presence is here tonight. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. There is liberty. There is freedom. There is healing. There is miracles. And tonight, God, we come before you asking to move, to minister, to speak, to touch, to encourage your people tonight. There's those that are here that are hurting tonight. They need you, God. Those that are sick in body, afflicted with pain or disease, we pray for healing to take place. We pray for those marriages, God, that need restoration. We ask you right now that you be the center of that marriage and bring them back together as one Father. We pray for those that come in maybe a little bit tired, a little bit weary. I pray tonight that you would encourage, that you would strengthen, that you would refresh. Move tonight in a mighty way, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would have your way, God. Open the hearts of your people and all those that are watching the line, wherever they may be all over the world, touch them tonight. Let them feel the same presence that's here tonight. Let them feel it wherever they are as they're watching. We thank you, God. We're careful to give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shouts. And victory always shouts. Come on, give Jesus a radical praise tonight. Come on, give Jesus a radical praise. It's fire, power, and prayer night. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we want to welcome everybody tonight, amen, to our Wednesday night fire, power, and prayer service. And also all those that are watching online, you are our V fam. Come on, give our V fam a big hand. Many people still tune in from all over the world. And we're so blessed that you tuned in. But if you're here in person and it's your first time, or maybe you've been coming on Sundays and it's your first time on Wednesday, lift up your hand real super high just so that we could greet you. Anybody out there for the very, right there? Great to have you, my brother. All right. Anybody else out there? Praise the Lord. Well, we want to welcome you. And this is what we want you to do. We want you to get out of your seat. We want you to greet your brother, your sister, and the Lord. Go out there and spread some love around at this time. And make sure you greet our first-time guest. Come on, give Jesus one more hand of praise, Victory Outreach Mother Church. Come on, we could do a little bit better than that. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, whether you're here live or you're viewing from online at home. We are in store for a tremendous, tremendous night tonight. And right now we come into a very important part of our service. I'm going to ask the ushers and usherettes to go ahead and take their place. 
And if you came ready to give, I want you to go ahead and lift your hand if you need a tithing envelope and, a, and or a United We Can envelope. And there's some hands going up, ushers, right here. There's a few hands going up. And if you're at home, we want you to go ahead and grab your device. And there's different ways you could give here tonight. You could text to give. I love texting to give. And you just dial 4577. Put the VO dollar amount, the amount and the keyword tithe under offering. It comes right out of your account. And also you could go ahead and go online. Go to victoryarch.org and go ahead and go to the giving tab. You could give that way. Or you could scan the QR code that's here and it will give your information. And it's an easy and accessible way to give. Or you can mail it in, and they have our address if you prefer to mail it in. But tonight, as you're preparing your giving, and I pray that you prepare something special. Because the Bible says to bring your whole tithe. Let me talk to this side. To bring your whole tithe into the house of God. Not part of your tithe, and that is 10% of anything that you get into your hands. That means that child tax credit you just got. Let me talk to this side. That child tax credit you just got, you give your 10%. And the Bible says that if you do that, if you test the Lord in this, and that is the only area where you could test God is in the area of your giving. He says, to see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so much. How many of you want to be blessed so much? Do you know what that means? That means that you cannot outgive God. You heard the saying, you give with the spoon, God gives back with the shovel. You give with the shovel, God gives back with the wheelbarrow. You give with the wheelbarrow, God gives back with the bulldozer. How many of you want the bulldozer blessings upon your life? You know, I've been stretching, my, me and my wife have been stretching in the area of our giving. We've been really saying, you know, God, we need provision. And we, this week we're celebrating some birthdays in my family. And we've been giving above and beyond. And I said, man, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do certain things. Today I get a phone call. And, they, and this is funny because this is how I know it's God. They said, you were just here with us and we forgot to give you a check. Let me talk to this side. I never get phone calls like that. They said, we forgot to give you your check. Can we sell you? And I was like, you know, I thought it was going to be a little, you know, a you know, couple, 20, 30, 40 bucks. It was over a few hundred dollars. They zelled into my account. And I, you know what I did? Listen. If you're at home, you know what I did? I texted my tithe, right? I got it in my account and I texted it right away. And I said, God, I'm just giving with a spoon. But now I'm going to give with a shovel. And I'm going to start to increase my giving because I've seen the faithfulness of God upon my life. So tonight maybe you're here and you say, I've never stepped out in the area of tithing. Well, become a tither. Test God and see if he doesn't bless your life. So tonight if you're preparing your tithe and your offering, we also have United We Can. We are a worldwide ministry, and we are all over the world, as you're going to see on Sunday we, as we celebrate United We Can Day. So you could also become a part of that, a dollar a day, or you could begin to go into different levels. So tonight, how many of you want the blessing? Lift your hands if you want God's blessing. Okay, ushers, get envelopes into every single hand that raises. <laughs> I want you to stand tonight if you're ready to give. Online, if you're ready, we want you to go ahead and go online and do that. You could also go to the QR code and give right there with your, with your device. I want you to lift your giving real high. We're going to pray blessings over it. Father, tonight we thank you for just the privilege we get to come into your house and experience your presence. But also to partner with you in the area of our finances, God. We ask you to bless the giver as we sow a seed. We know that you're going to multiply it and that it's going to produce good fruit. We ask you for blessings right now. Open up the windows of heaven upon your people in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says amen and amen. Go ahead and make your way and drop your offering into the offering baskets tonight. And do it with a smile as I ask Travis and Erica to come and make announcements. Praise the Lord. Good evening, Victory Outreach Mother Church. Are we still excited to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Come on, somebody. Just a quick special announcement. The cafe is open, so feel free to go ahead and grab some coffee on your way out this evening. Um, we do have some special announcements we'd like to share with you at this time. What do we have, Erica? We want to invite you back tomorrow. On Thursdays, we have a special group called Grief Share. And Grief Share is designed for those that have endured loss in this season or been affected by loss. We want to invite you right there in the conference room tomorrow for Grief Share. 
Also, on Friday, we continue with our Power Up Prayer. That is our radical time right here in the sanctuary at 6 a.m. So don't miss out. Be a part of the vein that our church is jumping into with prayer. Amen. And let's not forget Sunday morning celebration service at 9 and 11 a.m. It's a special service, though. It's United We Can Day. Amen. Let's give a round of applause for World Missions. Come on. So we want to encourage everyone to come dressed up. Pick your favorite country. Uh, come representing tomorrow, uh, Sunday morning. Amen. Also, we have our, our World Changer and our Difference Maker shirts available in the foyer. If you've reached $250 or you've broken that $1,000 barrier, we want to uh, encourage you to go and pick up your shirts and come representing your shirt there on Sunday morning. Amen. And uh, next, we have a Sunday night gang service. Amen. At 6 p.m. special powerful service for our young adult and student ministry so we want to encourage you to come on out and see what the Lord is doing there Sunday nights. Saturday August 14th mark your calendars we are going to the beach as a church we're going to Bosa Chica Church and that's Saturday August 14th so mark your calendars also August 16th we are going to Dodger Stadium as a big church family so make sure you buy your tickets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> make sure you buy your tickets right there online to make sure that we're all there together. Praise the Lord. And let's not uh, forget Sunday, August 22nd. We're having special, uh, special service. We're having water baptisms right here in the sanctuary. So if you know someone that's recently given their life to the Lord or you yourself have not yet been baptized, we want to encourage you to uh, sign up and to be a part of that special day, amen. And last but certainly not least, we wanna remind everyone, our married couples, if you have not registered, we wanna encourage you to register for our marriage retreat coming up in September, amen. And at this time, if you can turn your attentions with me to the screen for some video announcements. Someone that's called of God to pour out into the next generation, to care for people, to love people, to have integrity, love, and to be selfless. A leader is somebody who is willing to take risks, to take those around you and just lift them up to God, to live as an example for this upcoming generation, to be someone who's willing to put others before themselves. At this retreat that you will not leave the same, but I pray you'll have such a hunger for God that when you go back, that you're going to revolutionize your church. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a good, good hand here tonight. I think we can do better than that. I'm talking about the King of Kings. I'm talking about the Lord. Let's give a good, good hand. He deserves it. All the honor, all the glory. Everybody stand. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Clear your minds. Don't worry about what you're going to do after service. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about work. Just give this time over to God because he wants to move here in this place. Lift up your hands. Holy Spirit, you are
I lived in this place. Father God, we thank you here tonight for your, your beautiful presence that's here, it's so evident. Holy Spirit, have your way and take complete control. Move how you desire to move tonight. I pray, Lord, that you will increase and I will decrease. And the word that you gave me specifically for this time, for this hour, will pierce the hearts of your people. And we will not leave this place the same. And we will be ready to do what you've called us to do as the ministry of Victory Outreach. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. And the church says, and the church says, um, give a neighbor your high, high five and you may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Let's give our worship team a hand. Don't we have an awesome, tremendous worship team? We are truly blessed with the best. And um, first of all, I want to thank God for my salvation, for his keeping power over my life. I'm 29 years old and I grew up in this ministry. Uh, I'm truly grateful for, for this ministry and God has kept me. He's been faithful at times where I haven't been faithful. Can I get an amen here tonight? He's been so good. He's had his hand over my life, and I'm, I'm grateful. I don't, I don't take that for granted. I'm also grateful for our founders. How many love our founders? Past Sunny, Sister Julie, trailblazers, pioneers. And what I love about them is that they've already accomplished so much, but they still keep the vision on the forefront. When it can be so easy to retire and to kick back, no, 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 they said no. It, Sister Julie says, if I only had another life to give, I would give it. I don't know about you, but it's easy to follow leaders like that. So I'm grateful for our founders. Truly, truly am. Also our pastor, Pastor Annie Jr., Sister Kim. How many love our pastors, senior pastors, the shepherds of the house? I'm grateful because our, our pastors really believe in us, and especially in this third wave. They, they, they've given us opportunity, and we don't take that lightly, and... and um, you know, if you would only see what some of us see behind the scenes of how our pastor and, and how our pastor's wife operate. I mean, they, they truly love this church and they truly love the people in this church. And when they don't see somebody, they make it a point to make sure that we connect with them. And there may be somebody watching online that you haven't been in church in a while and you may feel like you're not missed. You are missed. And there's a place for you here. We love you. We can't wait for you to come back because God is doing something special here in person. Love you, Pastor Sister Kim. Also, the ministers of our church. We have great, great examples of our church, of people that have continued to keep the faith, that have been steadfast, that have continued to serve the Lord throughout the different seasons of their life. Uh, I'm thankful for all the ministers. Pastor Phil, thank you. My gang pastor, you know, gave, continue to give me opportunity coming up. And um, we, I thank you. Tr truly, truly blessed. And um, I love this part, and I don't take this lightly, is I am a product of a special group, and this group is called the God's Anointed Now Generation. I'm grateful to be a part of the gang because God has anointed us now, not later. He's anointed us now to reach this generation. I love the gang. also want to uh, thank my beautiful wife, Sister Alexis. We've been almost five months married. And I was, I was laughing because we're getting ready to go to the, to the marriage uh, seminar and... Um, I know there's going to be a time where there's going to be a, they're going to do a vow renewal. And I think we're only going to be seven months married, but we're going to renew our vows. And Sister Kim's saying, because God wants to make sure that you're going to keep them. Amen. And so um, let's, open up, let's open up and work for one more, one more time. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. We thank you, Master, because you're so good and you're so grateful. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I know a couple weeks ago we celebrated 4th of July. How many had a great 4th of July at the time of Independence Day? And I know we all celebrated in different cities. And a, a city that myself and some of the gang celebrated in was in the city, our city, the city of Chino. And we were lighting up some fireworks. Pastor Philip was there. And as we were lighting fireworks, we are having a great time, great time of fellowship, connection. And while we're lighting some fireworks, we see a, a herd of people, probably about 30, 40 people, running down the street and we were wondering what are these people running after and, and to be honest if I keep it real say keep it real I thought it was the cops because they had some illegal fireworks so you can see some of our people got a little nervous as well but um we were looking and somebody there shouted said there is a fire down the street and so myself and a few of the gang warriors we ran over there and we realized and I think they have the picture of it if they're able to put it on the screens it was, it was actually on the side of the freeway. Look at that fire. 
So no joke, fire was there on the side of the freeway. And many people were there, and they went just to spectate and to take pictures and to record videos, to get selfies of the fire, with no urgency to do anything about it. And myself and a few of the guys, we found a way to get access to actually where the fire was. We, we got into a local house right next door. We, we pulled the hose as much as we can pull it, and we, we turned the, the water on, and we began to extinguish that fire. I'm telling you, it was a no-joke fire. It was not a little flicker. It was, it was truly a fire. We were sweating, but I, I felt like a first responder, like Evangelist Philip would say. I felt like a first responder. I felt like a fireman for the day. And to be honest, if I keep it real, I was expecting the, the city of Chino to maybe recognize us with a medal. I don't, we didn't need a check. Maybe just the, the key to the city, Channel 5, Channel 11. We'd be able to share about our ministry. But if you're watching, it was us, and um, it's not too late uh, to recognize us. Amen. But tonight I'm going to be talking about a different type of fire. If you could turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And the title of my message here tonight is Fan the Flame. Say Fan the Flame. Say Fan the Flame. 2 Timothy chapter 1. It's a very familiar passage of Scripture. And I'm going to be reading out of the NIV version. And for the sake of time, I'm going to get into it, but believe me, it's there. The Bible reads like this. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promises of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I am served as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. And as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame. Say, fan into flame. The gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. For the Spirit of God does not give us a, a spirit of timidity, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about the Lord of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Verse 9. He has saved us and has called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given, us, given to us with Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and life and immortality to light through the gospel. Verse 11. And of, and of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, for I know whom I believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you have heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Let's say amen. Isn't that a powerful portion of scripture? There's so much we can truly pull from that. But there's a few things I want to hit on here tonight. And in this passage, you have the Apostle Paul. And he was released from prison in Rome in A.D. 62 after his fourth missionary journey, during which he wrote 1 Timothy and Titus. Paul was again imprisoned under Emperor Nero. It was the time that he wrote this passage, 2 Timothy. He was languished in a cold dungeon, chained, chained like a common criminal. Even those that were dear to his heart, those that were close to him, even had a hard time finding out where he was being kept. See, but Paul knew that his work was close to being completed and that his life was nearing the end. As you continue to read this passage, it says that Paul was betrayed by everyone in the, pro in the province of Asia. And I want to stop right here with saying this is that God has called us to be a loyal people. Let me say that again. God has called us to be a loyal people. We should be loyal to him. Can I get an amen? We should also be loyal to the people that have imparted into our lives. 
loyal to our leadership, loyal to our pastors, loyal to the church. Can I get an amen here tonight? God has called us to be loyal. And I remember Pastor Ed once said that loyalty makes a person attractive. Does anyone here tonight, you want to be attractive, that you're willing to be loyal throughout the different scenes of your life. You say, you know, I'm going to be committed to you, Christ, because I understand without you I would have nothing in the first place. And I understand that you, you put me in the ministry of victory outreach. It was not by coincidence. It was not by action. So I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to waver. I'm going to prosper where I'm planted. God has called us to be loyal. But what I also love about the Apostle Paul in this passage is that even in the midst of being imprisoned, even in the midst of betrayal, he was concerned about the welfare of the churches during the the persecution under Nero. And he tells the disciple Timothy to guard the the gospel and to preserve it and to continue to preach. And even if necessary to suffer for it. Paul also wanted to write to the Ephesian church through his letter through Timothy. Paul desired for his disciple Timothy to stay on fire. Say, stay on fire. Do I have any on fire people here in the church tonight? I know this is fire, power, and prayer night, but is there anyone here that you're, you're on fire, you are ignited, you're ready to do whatever God has called you to do? Well, how do we stay on fire? Or how do we allow that fire to continue to grow? First of all, we need to catch the fire. Say, catch the fire. You see, when somebody is birthed in the fire, they will not settle for smoke. There's too many people in this generation or also in Christianity that they're settling for smoke. They're settling for things that look like fire. They have the appearance of a fire but don't have the substance of a fire. Things that sound good on YouTube, things that sound good on Instagram, things that look good on a post. Preachers that preach the message that you just want to hear but don't need to hear. But here in Victory Outreach, we have been birthed in the fire since 1967. This has been a move of God. That's where Victory Outreach started. It started in the heart of God. And we have continued to stay in the fire. We also catch the fire by seeking the face of God. How do we do? We do that through intensive prayer. That's why we're here tonight. That's why a pastor and the leadership have made it a point to to continue to have prayer every Tuesday, every Friday morning. Because they, they understand that if we catch the fire, if we have a deeper desire to pray, then the anointing will fall upon our lives. See, there's many people that... They go through trials and they go through situations that could be avoided only if they prayed. But many times, instead of going to God first, they go to him last. When everything else doesn't work out, then they want to cry out to God. But I believe God is raising up a people here tonight that's going to continue to seek the face of God through intensive prayer. That they're going to be those people that are going to rejoice always to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in all circumstances. The Bible also says in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13, I love this this scripture. The Bible says, the fire must be kept burning at the altar continuously. It must not go out. You see, that fire, it represented the presence of God. There's some people here tonight that you need to make it a point of saying, I'm not leaving this place until I experience God here at this altar. That I don't want my fire to be extinguished, but I want to continue to allow it to grow, continue to move in my life so I can be somebody that makes a difference in my generation. We need to stay on fire when we pray, also when we get into God's word. The word of God is living. It's truly God's word. When we read the word of God, it feeds our faith. It fuels our fire. The Bible reads in Isaiah 55 verse 11 that the word of God will not come back void. What does that mean? That means that if we abide to his word, meaning God's word, and absorb it and internalize the truth, it will bring forth life which will produce good fruit. Before this whole pandemic hit, our pastor was talking about being those that are planted by the trees of living water. Well, we will bear much fruit. You see, it was those that were planted that they're still here. It's those that were surrounding themselves with the wrong people and with the scornful that they, they, they they were sifted. But even if you're watching, you still come back. We love you. 
We embrace you with open arms because we still love you here in this church. But we want to be people that produce good fruit. We do that by reading the word of God. Because we know with an assurance that God loves us. We know that Jesus died and rose again so that we can be set free from, from a life of sin and death. And so we learn how to live in the light of those truths. I mean, that's powerful. So that's something, something happens to somebody when they know the truth. When they have the assurance and they know what they believe and they know, yes, Jesus came and he died for our sins. But I love that. He didn't just die. He rose in the third day. And because he rose, now we have the power. Now we have the authority. Now we have the anointing to do what he has called us to do. That's something to get excited about. Desire to get into God's word. Say, catch the fire. We need to catch the fire. Second thing we need to do is we need to feed the fire. You see, if somebody does not feed the fire in their life, it will eventually go out. We are called, the word of God says, not to just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. What does that mean? That means to take action. That means to get involved. That means that making a commitment to be in church. That means that you make a commitment to be here, not just to be here on a normal time, but to come early to seek the face of God. That's, that, that means that church is a priority in your life. That means that you won't take a job that keeps you away from church. Is that too strong? That, 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 that means that you won't plan vacations on Sundays. That, that means that you won't volunteer for overtime knowing that you will not be in the church house. No, no, we need to make a commitment to feed the fire in our lives by being in church, by showing up, by standing our ground, by being at our post and saying, Pastor, Sister Kim, I'm in it with you. I know we're called as the mother church to set the pace. So day in and day out, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to come to church. I'm going to come with a smile. I'm going to give God my best praise, my best worship. Why? Because he deserves it. We need to feed the fire. We need to make a deeper commitment. Not just seeing the need, but meeting the need. That's what I love about our ministry. We just don't talk about reaching the world. We are reaching the world. We don't talk about that there's hurting people out there. We actually send people out there to meet those needs. There was a need in Boise, Idaho. We sent somebody there. There's a need in Boston, Massachusetts. Before you know it, we're going to send a team out there. Why? Because we meet the need. That's why we have a group called the Treasure Seekers. That's a great place to clap, Treasure Seekers. Come on. Stir it up here in this place. God has given us a promise in Isaiah 45 to reach the treasure out of darkness, hidden riches, and secret places. That's what we're still doing. We're going out and we're reaching treasure. We're, we're evangelizing. We're, we're going to the darkest place. That's what's so unique about our ministry. When most people go to a city, they want to go to the nice parts. They want to go to the places to take nice pictures, to see the sights. But what I love about our ministry is when we go into a city, we say, show us the need. Show us where the drug addicts are. Show us where the gang members are. Show us where the lost people are. That's the place we want to go because we know that God has given us an anointing to reach those type of people. And it's not just for those type of people. We are also a family church. That means that maybe you never tasted a drug, you never drank alcohol, but at one time you were lost, but now you're found. You have a place here in this ministry. We have a group called the Treasure Seekers. We're called to be victory outreach. That means that we have the victory, and that's why we reach out. Not too long ago, we were there in the city of Fontana with a group of people. Pastor Joe was leading a team. And we were walking around, and we were hitting a different apartment complexes. And, and we seen this wall, and Pastor Joe looked over this wall, and he saw some people doing drugs. About five people getting high. And he gave the charge. He said, I wish I had some radical people that are willing to jump this wall. I wish I had somebody here that was willing to jump this wall. And so a group of young guys jumped over there. And I don't think he thought I was going to jump. 
Right, Pastor John? I don't think you thought I was going to jump. Because later on when everybody jumped, he was looking for me. He said, where's Xavier? No, he's over there. He, he took the charge. I never want to come to a place where I'm too dignified to reach people. I don't want to get too comfortable in a church suit where, where I no longer want to reach the hurting people anymore. Where I, where I lose sight of what God has called us to do. No, we, we jumped that wall and we told them about our ministry. And we just didn't tell them about you. We told them, no, no, the same God that did it for us, he could do it for you. And they were broken. Two people gave their lives over to the Lord. There was another individual that wanted to go into our victory home. Why do we do that? We do that because we want to continue to feed the fire. We do that because we understand that there's a world out there that's still lost and hurting. And we know that they're going to hell. But Jesus gave us the answer, we have experienced it, and now we want to tell everybody about somebody that could change anybody. Can I get an amen here tonight? I'm a nobody telling somebody about everybody that could change anybody. My God can change anybody. Nothing is impossible for God. We want to continue to feed the fire. Say feed the fire. Get involved. Reach a soul. Reach somebody that's lost and hurting. Also get involved in one of our victory groups. I don't think they got it yet, Pastor Daniel. I'm giving them another chance. God is doing something in the victory groups here in this church. They're not just small groups. They're not just kumbaya groups. They are groups that have made a dedication to reach their city for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Get involved in a victory group. Get connected. We're part of a mega church. That's awesome. And we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to break barriers. But it's important that you get connected. Because when you get connected, you're going to surround yourself with people that are going to help you feed your fire. I'm here to tell you tonight, don't let the circumstances that you're going through dictate how you serve God. In our opening text, the Apostle Paul, he was locked up. Say locked up. He was locked up like Akon. How many know Akon? He was locked up. They weren't going to let him out. But he was still concerned about the mission that God had given him. He remembered his encounter on the way to Damascus where he was blinded. But then he was given a mission to reach the Gentiles. And he was grateful that God was still able to use his life, even though he was a, a persecutor of Christians. He was also a chief sinner. But out of his gratitude, he was grateful for what God did in his life. So he said, you know, no matter what I got to go through, I've been shipwrecked. I've been betrayed by those that are near to me. But no matter what I go through, I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on God. I'm going to keep my eyes on the mission that God has given me. We need some people like that here tonight. It don't matter what's going what's going on in your life. Your kids may not be saved. Keep your eyes on Jesus. All hell may be breaking loose at home. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Your finances may not be right right now. Keep your eyes on Jesus because I'm here to tell you that he will see you through. Don't grow weary of well doing. For in due season, for some of you, this is your season where you're going to reap harvest. But do not lose heart. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is the not, not the time to say no mas. This is not the time to say a stubble. This is your time to get into the fight. No matter what you're going through, no matter how circumstances may seem, continue to stand firm. Continue to trust God because he will see you through. Say so feed the fire. Like you say, you also feed your fire by surrounding yourself with the right people. Don't hang out with people that are going to try to extinguish your fire. The reason why they'll do that is because you're willing to do things that they are not willing to do. So because of that, they're going to try to keep you down. Why do you go to church on Wednesday? Why do you go Sunday? Why do you go to victory group? Why are you always at church? Church, 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 church. What about your family? What about your job? No, no, no. Get away from those people. Somebody, there's somebody here that needs to get away from those people. Those people are toxic. They'll do nothing for you. They're just going to hate on you. They're going to try to keep you down. There's some people here tonight that you need to delete some people that you're following on Facebook. That you're following on social media. You're drinking from the wrong wells. 
There's some people here that you need to delete some phone numbers here. Some Maxes from Texas. Come on, somebody. Remember that, Pastor Phil? Some of you have some Maxes from Texas, and they're going to do nothing for you. They wanted nothing to do with you. But now you're blessed. Now you're a man of God. Now you have all your teeth. Now you smell good. All of a sudden, they want to get in your liquor. Say, all of a sudden. Same with the women. Don't trust a guy that just knows how to sweet talk. That just talks the talk, but don't walk the walk. The type of guy you want is the type of guy that knows how to pray. You want the right one, not the right now. Let me give you some news. If you never see him on the streets, he's not the one. If he never makes altar calls, he's not the one. If he's one of the last ones here, first ones to leave, he's not the one. You can see there's something happening right here, Pastor. You can see there's this conviction. Right? And don't be that one that flirts to convert. You want to flirt to convert? He's there at your job. You see him there at the gym. He looks good pumping iron. You're like, oh, if he was only saved. And you think you can save him. You can't save him. God needs to save him. <laughs> Allow God to reach him. If God reaches him, then God will confirm it. He'll confirm it through leadership. I'm not going to be popular. I don't either. You want me to preach again, Pastor? Be somebody that stands firm. You keep your ground. You surround yourself with the right people. You listen to the right voices. The Bible reads there in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of the way of their life and imitate their faith. Say imitate their faith. We have great leadership. We're blessed with people that have continued to stand the test of time. I'm grateful. Let's give a hand for those that have continued to stick it out. But I stood firm. Like I see Pastor Charlie there. I see Brother Leonard, Sister Kathy. Come on. We have great examples here in this church. And we need to imitate their faith. I'm especially talking to the third wave, the young people. Let's not act like we have it all together. We can glean for those that have been around for a while. Let's learn from their mistakes so we don't make the same mistakes. Can I get an amen here tonight? We need to listen to the right voices. And the third thing, I'm almost done. The worst team makes their way. We need to catch the fire. We need the, to feed the fire. And the third, the third thing we need to do is fan the flame. Say fan the flame. Going back to our text, the Bible reads, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us not, a, not to make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. We all need to come into a place into our lives where we know how to fan the flame. Your leaders can't do it for you. Your friends can't do it for you. It has to be us. We continue to fan the flame in our lives. Because if we don't, we'll become cold and ineffective. And in our ministry, we have continued to remain on the cutting edge. We've experienced revivals. We've experienced breakthroughs. And the reason that happened is because we have people that have gone before us that continue to fan the flame in their lives. See, Timothy, he was a third waver. He had a sincere faith that lived in his grandmother and his, mo and his mother. A sincere faith. 
Not a perfect faith, but sincere. You know how you fan your flame? By staying broken. Our founder says he's like, he's, he gets concerned if a day goes by where he hasn't been broken. I've seen our pastor broken here at the altar. I've, I've, seen, I've seen our leaders broken. And I want to be that type of person. I don't want to be that person that just goes through the calisthenics of ministry. That just goes through the motions. That is doing but not being. Because it's those that are continuing to do but they're not being like Christ. And they're not getting into his presence. Those are the ones that get burnt out. Everybody stand. We got to fan the flame. It's our time to expand. We've seen it internationally. We see it happening. There's revival breaking loose in South Africa, in Panama, in Guadalajara. We see it happening. We're launching a church to Los Angeles. We're going to start a UTC there in New York City. We're also going to see a breakthrough in Amsterdam, Holland. I know that's near to our pastor's heart. But also here. We're seeing leaders and disciples rising up and are making the commitment to expand. We're seeing the glimpses of it. We're seeing the beginning of it. But the best yet to come. But we got to continue to stay on the wall to build and battle with the assurance, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that God is with us. Because we have the authority through the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to be on fire. We have the authority and we have the anointing to continue to impact the inner cities of the world and dispossess the nations. But we need people here tonight to make the commitment to continue to fan the flame, to continue to stay in the fight. They're willing to expand their vision, expand their mentality, and expand their hearts. Every hand lifted here in this place. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
want you to come, come right here. You are a miracle. You shouldn't be here tonight. You should still be locked up. But God set you free. He set you free. And he's going to use you to be his mouthpiece and to be his instrument. But you got to make that decision here tonight to be fully surrendered. You can't do it on your own. You tried. You see what happened. You got to make that decision here tonight. Lift up your hands. Father God, Lord, I thank you for Manuel. I thank you, Father, for the anointing you placed upon his life, Lord. I know you've called him to be a soul winner. I know you've called him, Lord, to reach people that are lost and hurting, Master. And I pray, Lord, that he will continue to be grateful because you've continued to have your hand upon his life. You set him free. And I pray, Lord, you will do a new thing in him, Lord. Renew him. Renew his mind. Fill him up with your presence, Lord. Fill them up, Lord, with a fresh anointing, with a fresh fire, Lord, that he will allow you to do the work in his life, that you will bless his sacrifice, that you will bless his obedience, and you will use him to do great and mighty things for your honor, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Continue to stay in that presence. God's here in this place. Munoz, I want you to come up here with your son. When I see you guys, it reminds me of me and my dad growing up. God has a great plan for your life. He does. Ever since you've walked through our church doors, I've, I've, you've, you're, you've stood out to me. Dad's been through a lot, but he's still here, he's still standing, and he did that with you on his mind. So just how that sincere faith was transferred in Timothy's life, that, that faith's going to be transferred to you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Lift up your hands. Both of you, lift your hands.
fire extinguisher or a fire igniter. Sometimes at church, we feel the flames, we feel it, we feel it. Then we go home and we extinguish our wife, our children, our workplace. Every day, make a decision to fan the flame. Every day, you got to make a decision. I'm going to serve God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I'm going to be the best husband I could be, the best father I could be, the best wife you could be, the best son or daughter you could be, the best granddad, grandmother, all for the glory of God. And then, on top of that, put your hands to the plow. The ministry that God has called you to be a part of, give 100% to it. We're starting all these churches all over Victory Outreach, but this is the mother church. We set the standard. We set the standard. This place is going to fill up because the Victory groups are going to be reaching out. Victory Center is going to be reaching out. We're going to bring people in and we're going to build God's house pandemic or nothing. It's over. We're just going to believe God for souls. And if you're watching on VFAM, get the shot. Come over here. Get back in the game. We're going to sing this song because it's been a song, our anthem song for the last several months. Lift your hands with me as we sing it. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up, until I lay in my head, oh, I will see of the goodness. side over here yet, but I'm going to do it again. <laughs> How old are you now? 18 years old. Cruz has been working with him for a few years now, right? Working on the drums, getting the drums going. He's a security, he has his little earpiece, and you're called to preach. What you never thought you could do, God's going to pour out his spirit upon you. And the Bible says, your young men shall see visions, they shall prophesy. And as you stay in the, in the vein of the Holy Spirit, God's going to put his words in your mouth. Lift your hands right now. Lord, I pray a power anointing right now. Oh, come on, no, take the whole thing. Don't let it, don't let it go. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't push, I just touch. And Nate? God's not finished with you yet. He doesn't give up on us because he's a good God and he's running after you. So you never give up. You never lose heart. You stay in the game. You never stop. God's called you to greatness.
want that fire to continue to grow. Like, like he preached tonight, Xavier preached really good today. Powerful message. And it's not just a message, it's an impartation for change. He talked about don't hang around the wrong people. This is what you call strange fire. Get it wrong, get around the wrong people. Just like Peter when he was around the wrong people. And Jesus predicted the day before that he's going to deny him three times. And Peter was saying, I'll never deny you. I'll die for you. Big words. But then he went around the wrong crowd during the worst trial of his life, watching his master getting persecuted. During your worst trial, that's when the enemy wants you to get around the wrong fire. And in some cases, smoke up with the wrong fire. I love somebody. You're smoking out when you should be at the altar. Or he'll bring a girl around you that all of a sudden you look nice to, to her all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Don't think of it's all of a sudden. That's the enemy. The enemy in high heels. In some cases, flats. They wear flats now. I don't know. Sneakers. With their big eyelashes that are not even real. <laughs> Waving at you. think it's strange because that's strange fire and you get burned by that fire girls those guys that think they're smooth smooth talkers slap them get out of my face dude I'm a woman of God I don't belong to this world no more I belong to God I'm in this world but I'm not of the world I'm a child of the living God and I'm not giving up my faith for you. So you gotta fan that flame. You gotta fan that flame. Somebody fan their flame. Come on, fan your flame. The reason why guys like me or Pastor Charlie or Brother Leonard stay a long time in this thing is because we kept fanning the flame. Oh yeah, the flame almost went out a few times on us. But we never give in and we never give up. We keep on rising and say, you know what? Nothing's going to take me out. In Jesus' name, it's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. That's why I'm seeing my children get saved. That's why I'm seeing other children get saved. Because God wants to build a legacy through you. When you stick it out, your children will follow you. Come on, somebody. Even those that don't have children yet. You're saying, man, I don't want to have a child yet, but you got to pray now that you get the right woman or the right man at the right time, in the right way, and then raise them in the ways of the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Lift your hands one more time. We're going to close in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this great word tonight. We thank you for your powerful presence that we sense in this place. That this church, the mother church, 54 years and we're still on fire, still giving birth, still planting churches, still raising disciples, still winning souls, still planting victory groups, victory centers. And Lord, I pray that you just give us a desire to build and to battle with the burden for hurting people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise clap. Do it with enthusiasm. Come on. You are dismissed. Love you all. God bless you.